Helen is 83 and has been married to her second husband for 60 years. She has been managing symptoms of recurrent major depression since childhood. She was treated with electroshock and insulin shock therapies over 30 years ago and seems to have been once again thrown into a low mood by recent events. She has had a lethal supply of her little capsules on hand for a long time in case she decides to end her own life. That yes, right? it was in uh, 50, no, in 59. Oh, later. I, later. Then, I, I'm sorry, it was 59 I had the surgery, oh. and six months later then I had the breakdown. Was it a serious surgery? Yes, was a yes, it was a five-hour surgery. surgery. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't think I was going to live to get off of the operating table. But I did, and then six months later, I had this nervous breakdown. And I don't remember what happened. I got up that morning, and I don't know, I I don't remember what happened. But when my husband came home at noon to have his lunch, I was just partway on the couch and partway on the floor. But I had thrown things all over. I had broken dishes. I had upset the chairs. But I don't remember what happened. Hmm. So then he called the doctor that did the surgery, and he, in those days they came to the house. They injected me with, I think it was amytal sodium, and he, they put me what out. What was that for? Put, you... put me out for two or three days. And then when I did come to, then they kept doctoring me at home for a couple of years, or a year and a half, and every time I'd feel a spell coming, I would just call the office and they, the doctor would drop everything, come right to the house and wow. inject me. And that went on for quite some time. And then the last time I got real bad and they had to put me in the hospital down there. And he came in, the doctor did one morning, and he said, you will have to go to Denver. He said, we can't do any more for you here. <clears throat> so he had already called a psychiatrist in Denver. And I was, came up to Mount Airy. And I had electroshock treatments every other day for two weeks. <clears throat> every other day for two weeks? Yes. And they would Can you tell us about a, that, how that worked then? Well, yes. We were, <clears throat> there were several of us ladies that did not stay in the main hospital. There was a, a brick building. We'd come Caddy Corner and about a half a block down. That's where they housed the women. And it, it's about 6.30 in the morning, an orderly would come, and we'd take us over to the main hospital <clears throat> in our night clothes. And they would take us downstairs, lock all the doors as we entered mm-hmm. down. Remember that. Uh, and <clears throat> they would uh, put, <clears throat> excuse me, put us to sleep. <clears throat> now, how would they do that? They'd give you some... In- injection. Injection. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then they would hook up these electrodes or whatever. I don't know. I. You were under... So you didn't see that no, part of it? No, we didn't see anything like that. Mm-hmm. And we didn't wake up until around 11 o'clock that morning. They'd put us about 7. And then they would, we'd wake up and they'd take us upstairs and sit us for a while till we were able to walk back to the uh, where we were staying. Hmm. What was the main reason that you think your doctor and brush suggested that you come in? Well because of my the way I was acting and the way I was thinking. And How were you feeling then? I, mean, I was feeling down, and I would cry a lot. And the least little thing would just uh, just set me off. You know, I just couldn't control myself. I just couldn't control myself. So it was, like, so sad that you Yes, just... and then uh, if, if some person would uh, irritate me, then I would really get up. I see. Is that when the plates would fly and things like that? Yes. 